Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Honest to Pod with uh, Trashley McAllister. Oh my God, your impression of me last week was awful. Absolutely <laughs> awful. Ma'ale. 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 I speak really well, thank you. And uh, I'm Matthew Ali. Yeah, you see the difference? Ma'ale. I do have a high pitched voice. Ma'ale. Uh, where, why do you think that sounds like me? That's exactly how you sound like. No, well, I don't put on like a, this fake man accent that you do. This really like masculine, oh, oh um, I'm kind of gay, but no one can tell because I do a deep voice. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. That's, that's what you do generally. I mean, like, oh, oh, you right, mate? You're right, lad. Well, it's just the way I speak. Maybe my body instinctively knows that a deeper voice might attract attractive men. It's worked for me in the past, so. I think your incessant handsiness and the fact that you over compliment and the extra grease that you have on your face means they can look at themselves in your face has helped you get with these hot guys. I don't think it's the voice. I think the difference is what you think is grease is actually sweat. Because I exercise and you don't, you're not too sure what it is. I got my bike out this week. I started cycling, so I do exercise. Thank you very much. You cycled to the shop to get... I cycled to work. <laughs> how, far, back. how far is that? Uh, well, it's different places, but I went to Westminster this week, and I did that, and then there was one in Holborn. In fact, I went to Holborn, to Westminster, to home, mm. and then the other day... So tell me that distance, not just place names. Oh, okay. Well, in total, it would have been like an hour a day of cycling. Okay. I think that's good. Again, not, not quite a distance, but okay, an hour, an hour a day is quite good. I don't know what the distance is. I don't know what the distance is. So like, I can't help with that, unfortunately. But yeah, <laughs> I would say in terms of like time spent on the bike, it was definitely an hour for sure. Well, good for you. Kudos. Did you break sweat? Uh, I didn't, but that's because I like to take my time while I'm cycling. Well, <laughs> so, no, I did. I did. <laughs> so you actually cycle, you cycle like a hundred meters down the road, and you just yeah, went yeah. really, really slowly. It took me an hour. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to sweat when I'm cycling. He does that. Uh, everyone know. else, you cycled. I've been cycling as well this week. So look at us. Yeah, you cycled to and from the shop twice today. <laughs> I, did, I did actually. That's true. But that's. I also cycled out to the gym. I cycled to the gym now instead. Do you cycle to work? Um, no, I quite like the walk to work. Uh, but if I start going to the gym more before work, I will be cycling back and forth. That'd be nice. Yeah. You're going to be so thin. I know. I know. Did, I post, posted a picture on Instagram. Did you see it? Uh, I did a workout yesterday in the sweat. And I really I, like your, the comment that you put. <laughs> what was it again? I forget. Uh, so it's just your fat crying. <laughs> <laughs> true. But, I think that was so true. That's completely 100% true. But did you it. see... Do you see the sweat print? How I had a big fat ass. Looks... Well, I, I didn't really know what part of your body that was. Like it just looked like it could have dropped or anything. Like I couldn't really tell exactly what it was. So yeah, I couldn't really tell. And there was no like um, like perspective. Like you couldn't tell how big it was or small it was. So I did see it, but basically the effect that you wanted, it didn't work. So you need to try better next time. Well, I don't know what to say. Oh, actually, he's really tired today. So I think I'm gonna have to do all the talking. So he's going to have no comebacks whatsoever. So now's the time for me to get all the jabs in without any, what's the word? Repercussions. Without yeah. any repercussions because he has no idea about how to come back with anything. No. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally, I'm gliding through at the minute. I've bit dozed over. It's because I, I, again, back to fitness talk because it's what everybody likes to hear about. I did Brazilian, <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu today for the first oh time. Oh my God. What made you think about doing that? Well, one of the guys who owns the gym does it. And then one of my very first PTs I got in a different gym when I moved back, he coaches it. Mm. Um, and he said to me, he'd be saying, oh, I think you'd really, really like it. It's a nice transfer from rugby over similar sort of techniques. And, and I was like, well, okay. So, but you're using like, you know, in rugby, when you use somebody else's momentum against them. Mm. It's it about happening. a lot of grappling and holding and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And it's similar to that. So, uh, you know, I was so much of a beast on the field. I thought I'd... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is like fell right into you, like literally your skill set. Like, oh, actually, yeah. needs to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because why wouldn't he? Like, it's perfect for you. Exactly. Oh, exactly. It must be really hard as well. Again, we'll go back to your grease because for them to hold on to you, you just slide out. You know how you like slip? 
They're trying to hold on to your pussy, and you're like, "I'm out, bitch." <laughs> it reminds me of reminds me of the um clip in Family Guy. Have you ever seen the clip in Family Guy where they Violence. have there's a like a town fair or something, and one of the games they play is catch the greased up deaf guy. No, so they just get this deaf guy covered in grease and let him out of cage, and he goes running off, goes, oh, you "Can't catch me." Oh, no. <laughs> it's so bad but when you said that's, that it just made me think of that's think really about it. All right. how was your week or oh, weekend otherwise yeah it's been good uh works really busy all good highlights were the weekend and the, the excessive exercise i did how was your week and then we get into some issues my week was okay pretty quiet overall to be honest the mic was all right but i did do something yesterday which is exciting uh i went to the cinema i watched the film Sh- shut the front door isn't that crazy what did you yeah, see? Yeah, I went to see a film. I went to see Incredibles 2. Oh. And it was amazing. It was really, really good. Yeah. Really, really nice. And I didn't fall asleep or mm-hmm. sing along. So I think this is progress. This is good. Uh, yeah, so I might start watching some films. Maybe I'll watch one today. Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not watching the World Cup? Is that not on you, lad? I'm kind of watching the screen while it's on silent, but I kind of want to watch the end of the tennis, which is on now. Oh. Um, but I might just change it over and see. Plus, the World Cup final doesn't really bother me. I thought I was going to get into it. Turns out I was more interested in just England as opposed to like the World Cup. And England lost yesterday against Belgium, and they weren't doing very well, so it's kind of died Did up. England lose? They did, yeah, 2-0. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. I want to talk in another episode because I posted a lot of jokes about England this week. About England. football, just in general? Yeah, but them not bringing it home. And I... I got a bit of a backlash, a couple of comments sent to me about it. From who? Oh, just some friends and some strangers. Some people are all like, well, how did, how, you know, how did Ireland get on? And it's like, well, believe it or not, but as an Irish person, we get more joy in England not winning than we would if we did win. And the thing that annoys me the most about That's English, the fetus behavior. The thing that annoys me the most about the English is they acted like they'd won it just because they won a couple of games. And the thing that annoyed me the <laughs> most about it was, but winning, winning, winning a football game justifies the vandalism and mm. it, the attacks. And it's like, it disgusted me. And once I seen that, I was like, you know what? I would usually have backed England, but I'm not going to know. I think it's fair to say like English football fans, not just English people, because like in other sports and things like that, I don't think that necessarily the reaction that happened there would happen if it was another sport personally. I think that, Football fans behave that way. Mm. And I think it's fair to say. So, yeah, all that vandalism, the fact that they're like destroying ambulances and bus stations and buses and things like that is completely unacceptable. But it's not a representation of England. It's a representation of English football fans. Whatever. You do agree with that, for sure. Because you've been here with like the Rugby World Cup and Rugby like Six Nations, and none of that behavior goes down. None of it. It's, yeah, none of the vandalism, but there is sort of that mentality that as soon as England do well in something, they're in it, they're in, in it to win it. I have English friends who would deny the fact that their English r- rugby team are not that great because they... <laughs> what? <laughs> carry on, carry on. Oh, they will deny the fact that their English rugby team's not that great just for the sake of saying, admitting that it's shit. Let's talk about your topics. I'm not going through this. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> He's such a dick. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna play into my hands. I'm gonna be that English fan, just like proving your point. When in fact, <laughs> anyway, what do you want to talk about today, Ashley? Well, I'll let you go first. I went first last week. What do you want to talk about? So, as always, my week revolves around Love Island, and uh, I'm watching it and loving it and stuff. And it has gone has had a little bit of a dip in terms of the drama, which is annoying. What's happening now is everyone's really happy, and they're all enjoying themselves, which is not what I signed up for when I was watching Love Island. What got me going is, um, so there's like a whole bunch of couples now in there and they're starting to establish themselves. There's about two weeks left in this show. And, you know, they're between the age of like, you know, 20 and 26 kind of, and they're all coupling off and finding their relationships. One thing they are doing is becoming boyfriend and girlfriend. I didn't think they would form like actual relationships in the house. And then they started saying that they love them after about two weeks. And I was like, can you love someone after like two weeks? Like, do you not think that's a bit soon? If you've known these people, you live in a house with them after like 
you know, a month maybe, potentially. So I'm a bit, yeah, I think it's been six weeks. And they're already saying like how much they're in love and how much they love each other, this, that, and the other. And I was like, I don't know. I don't think that's, I don't understand feeling that because in this house, it's got that sort of like cabin fever syndrome type of thing where you only spend your time with this person or people. And so like everything's intensified. But yeah, I just don't think, what do you think? Like how quickly do you think it would take for you to fall in love with someone? I fall in love with somebody the minute I meet them. I spot them across the bar and I'm like... The bar. <laughs> yep. Or, you know, anywhere, the shopping center or the gym or the dog park or the cruising zone. And I'm just there and I'm like... I even have a dog yet. <laughs> just hanging out in the dogging park. Yeah, so I instantly fall in love. No, but realistically, I don't know. I think it takes me longer to realize I'm in love than I actually takes me to get in love. I don't realize I'm in love with somebody until something happens and there's a possibility that I'm not going to be with that person anymore. So I don't actually know how long it takes really? me. Yeah. Like I don't, if I'm, so you think they might not be interested in you, you suddenly fall in love. No, I mean, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm in love with that person before, but mm. it's only whenever, for example, if we have an argument and we don't speak for a bit and I'm like, Oh my god, I actually really like that guy. I really miss that guy, and maybe mm, I was in love okay. with him. Yes, yeah, it's, it's. I don't realize. So I don't. I. I don't. I don't even. I, I don't know how long it takes me to fall in love because I don't realize I'm in love. But I think it depends. Like it depends on how much time you spend together, how strong the connection is, isn't it? I, I think TV love. I don't think is real love. You don't think it's real love if they're on TV and suddenly they say they love each other. I think they... I mean, it's like, a hard situation. It's so unrealistic, isn't it? The situation that they're in. You know? um, I think, yeah, I mean, the cabin fever plays a part, but do they actually love... No, as soon as they come off that little shack of a place wherever they're at, they will... They'll be sliding on up anything else that's in the club. They're not going to be sticking with the guy they got in there. You're saying the girls. Oh, <laughs> well, it's more likely the guys, I think, will do that sort of stuff, to be honest. I don't know. Do oh, know? come on. They're, they're equally as bad. Absolutely not. I don't think they're equally as bad at all. Okay. I don't, I don't watch the show. Girls are loyal. I mean... Now you're here. Uh, if you ever hear like Georgia is loyal, it's a joke. This girl's an absolute joke. But most of the other women can be. I think men can a little be a bit more promiscuous. Or what about flirtation. my girl Megan? She's so she asked. She asked Wes to be in a relationship. The girl asked the guy to be her boyfriend because he was thinking about doing it the same day. And she's proper like, I'm settling down. I'm settling down. She knows that no one's coming into the house though in the next two weeks. She knows that. Basically, mm-hmm. now it's getting to the end straight. Uh, uh, people choose who they want to win the show as a couple, and she knows it's getting to that point where you haven't got time to discover new relationships. Now it's about winning the money or whatever prize they win. But I was listening to this podcast. Oh, go on. Go on. Go, you're talking about podcast. I keep interrupting you. I'm really sorry. So I sent you that link about the new Amy Schumer podcast, which yes. is, I think it's really, really funny. And yeah. I learned this new word, and I sent it to you as well, and it's called limerence. And you had, had you heard of it before? Never heard of it. I did look it up last night, but then mm. I have forgotten what it means. That's right. So I wrote it down just to make sure because I felt like when I was reading it, I was like, oh my God, I think this is me all the time ever. You know, when I say like I fall for people really easily or I have this like sort of idea mm. of like people that I like and stuff, I think this is more like closer to the feeling. Although this is not an official word, like as yet, they're saying there's not full studies on it or there needs to be more study on it. And I think that does happen now. Um, but so this psychologist called Dorothy Tenov, she uh, created this term when she made a book called Love and Limerence and its Experience of Being in Love. And what it says, is, in a state of mind which results from a romantic attraction to another person and typically includes, and um, this is where like, I think you'll like, recognize, this is where you get a little bit batshit cray. So it includes, typically includes obsessive thoughts and fantasies and a desire to form or maintain a relationship with the object of love and have one's feelings reciprocated. Okay. So, limerence is like where you just obsess about something or someone and they're the object of your affection and you want them to feel the same way about you. Right, okay. And it, and it doesn't specifically refer to uh, a sexual relationship. It's more like the idea of them. Right. So it's a bit like unre- unrequited love then or... Uh, potentially so it could start off that way and then then there's certain situations where they might genuinely feel the same way and they'll get the reciprocation that you wanted and then there's like a couple of outcomes from that so it might be you end up being in a relationship but because you both feel the same way about each other you both experience this limerence feeling that your relationship can be a bit more volatile or like i don't know progress quite quickly because 
you both have these very strong feelings towards each other. Um, and what happens is once you get the reciprocation, your level of limerence or the way that you feel about them can decrease. So it's not actually about being in love or in a relationship. It's the idea that you like the idea of them and want them potentially so much that at some point it does, it does grow very quickly and can be very deep. Uh, but it also does decrease after a certain period of time. Okay. And yeah. So it t- they were saying like, you know, the, the sort of longest sort of relationships that might happen is like where one is experiencing it and one isn't. So there you spend a bit more time trying to find out about more about each other. If you are in a relationship, you know, if one feels certain, a certain way and the one doesn't, because you do find out whether you do work for each other over a period of time. Whereas if you both really just obsess about each other, then you can turn yourself like both into this, like these crazy bad shit people that, you know, just want everything from each other and which is not always possible. Uh, one of the things that happens is, is that you like irrationally, all the negative things that you'll see in someone, you'll turn and make into a positive. So, oh, okay. so you sort of like justify everything off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's an axe murderer. Um, I can work with that, you know, kind of thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, just because, you know, you're like, oh, like, it's not that bad. You know? <laughs> I, I love axes. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're really clean, you know, and he's good with tools. Yeah. So, yeah. We, are, we are overpopulated around here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, he's not going to kill me. He'll kill other people. Something like that, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. And it just, I was like, oh my God. As soon as I sort of read up on it, I was like, this is, I think this is me. You know, well, you like I just want you an axe murderer. I am an axe murderer. Yeah, I have seventeen different axes. Uh, no, it's just uh, have you. If you talk about like this sort of um, this romantic attraction that you have another person, do you feel like you've ever felt that before with anyone and oh, wanted them to reciprocate your feelings, but potentially haven't? Probably, yeah. Um, uh, do you, probably, do you... I feel it all the time. <laughs> I feel like sometimes. But oh my you... god! But is it with? Because I was going to say, is it with straight people or gay people or... It doesn't make a difference. It's the, I don't think it's related to that. It's more about... No, but, yeah. but I mean, the people you have feel it towards, are they gay or straight? Both. So I think, you know, like before you sort of maybe... Before I had any sort of romantic relationships with anyone and kind of, you know, this is when I was like 17, 18, 19. It was definitely with like straight people for sure. Yeah, so I didn't know yeah. many gay people and stuff. And I wanted them to feel a certain way. And part of this feeling is the fact that any glimmer of hope that it seems in your mind will like turn something into, Oh, maybe there's hope that something may change or, you know, or you might even know part of it's feeling that you know that there's not going to be this, they're not going to feel the same way about you, but then just forming some sort of relationship with this person can somehow feel the need that you want from them. hundred percent. And so it's, it describes like sort of saying it can turn from like absolute joyous feeling to agony and despair within like a minute and it actually talked about like a physical reaction where you know where you get that feeling just at the bottom of your chest when you like someone a lot and you just want them to like message you back and they don't or you know they're across the room and they're not talking to you they're talking to someone else and you're just like why aren't they talking to me kind of thing basically it's that feeling of batshit craziness when you really want someone to like you and they don't yeah uh, i've been there times, <laughs> <laughs> what's worse is with they're just absolute dicks and they oh my god and they hook up with you every now and again and then treat you the same. <gasps> and then maybe a month later, and of course, like a lap dog, you're like, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please. And oh then, my God. Yeah. I haven't done that before. Oh, guilty. Not regularly. I remember one time uh, there was someone that I really, really liked. And this was when I was like 22, I think maybe. And yeah, we were really, really good friends. And we started spending more time with each other. We were going out a lot and sometimes it was just being me and him. And I was quite open actually about how I felt and said it. But then um, I started going on like a couple of dates with some other guys just because it was, you know, like I had well within my right. I was single. He wasn't interested. He made that very clear. But we used to go out every Friday, just me and him. We were really good friends. He was like my sort of dancing buddy, whatever. And then, yeah, we did hook up kind of like we didn't do too much, whatever, just purely because of like the situation at the time. And after that, he never spoke to me. For a long time, we weren't like friends for ages. And I went up to him and I was like, what's up? And he said, oh, he didn't know what happened. He sort of felt, he thought he'd felt something, but didn't. And that got rid of the feeling, in fact. Once he'd done that, it might have been opposite to saying what you're saying. Like, I would kind of got rid of that feeling because I was really hurt, you know? Mm. And it was quite easy for me to sort of separate that because, yeah, we weren't friends, like, for a long time, you know? I wouldn't necessarily say we're friends now. We would chat and we're quite, like, cordial or whatever. But, yeah, that relationship was kind of over from then. But I was completely, like head over heels and i thought that that had meant something like i was super excited after we'd sort of got together you know yeah Um, do you think it's anything to do with what what age did you come out at 
I came out to uh, like my friends and my, my my brother when I was like between like 17 and 18. Mm. Um, and then I went to university and I started telling loads of people straight away just as I got there. But I didn't tell my mum until I was 21. Okay. And I always define them as like separate ones because that was like the big shock. And that's where I had like a whole problem with my mum and stuff. Yeah. Why? Why? What do you think? Well, I was just thinking, is it, this might be very common of gay people because I imagine, you know, a lot of the time when you're going through your hormonal progression, <laughs> that's a term, um, you, you know, I couldn't act on the feelings that I was having with anyone openly. So you sort of kind of feel these things yourself. And as such, as you grow older, you get to the point where you, this, this is, you're so used to con- concocting sort of these weird fantasies in your head about how things can go because you've had to spend the last five years hiding your personality and hiding you are and hiding your feelings from people. That is just sort of a byproduct of that. Even now, whenever we're both out and proud and but we still sort of have this lingering thing in our head, which just to us seems natural because we grew up with it for so many years. I think I see what you're saying. I, and potentially, you know, maybe, maybe not for everyone. I know for me and stuff, like it might just be because, yeah, like I don't want to be like, it's easier <laughs> My, to fantasize about it than actually go and do it kind of thing. It might be for you because I am actually batshit crazy. You mean I am? Oh <laughs> yeah. my God. Like, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. So much. <laughs> did I realize? Uh, maybe I did. No, I don't know. I just latch on real easy to like sort of the idea of someone or something and it kind of just stays. And it's really weird. Like it won't just go, but it's only like specific people. I think I've said it 10 times over here. So yeah. like you and Jordan in particular. Like it's just, just sort of stuck for no reason whatsoever. And then, you know, like the negatives, you know, you're hairy, you're greasy, you know, you're not well, as good as you think you are. Well, look at um, the, look at the benefits of that. It's um, a, like a loofer, like um, d- um, wonders for your skin, all the hair. Uh, oh my <laughs> god! When I first started seeing someone, right, and I, it was so bad. It was the first time I started like kissing someone regularly who had a beard. Did you ever get like scabs all around your mouth? Yeah, uh, no, I've never had her. Oh my god! Yeah, dirty. I remember that actually. Dirty. My brother, I came home and I hadn't told my mum. Like I hadn't told my mum that was <laughs> I hadn't come out and stuff. But I'd start staying over there, like you know some point and then my brother was like what's all over your face and I was like I, I, don't, I don't know what to say to mum I've got scabs all over my face from a beard rash like from kissing someone yeah. I've had beard rash before do you remember your first love I do yeah I was gonna say actually after the breakup of my first love I think my feelings of what's that term you just said, liber, liberace? Limerence. Limerence. The feelings of limerence, I think, with me have, I put my feelings sort of, a bit, I'm a bit more guarded since my first love. So I was going to say that. I think that as well, about, not about myself, about you, in fact. Yeah. Because that's one of the things. So after your first love, do you think you've changed in some way? Oh, I've totally changed. Might just guarded. You don't yeah. want to get hurt again. Yeah. I think I built a wall up because that, uh, the breakup with, that was just one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And it just left me a bit wrecked. And once I rebuilt myself, I didn't really want to make anything in there to help it crumble again. So it was... Oh, babes. It was tough. You think that's now as well? Um, Is there something you think you need to sort of get over or build? Well, no, because I've fallen in love since then. I just think... Mm-hmm. I think getting getting me to get to the point where I'm falling in love is harder, which I imagine for any partner I've had since then where we've progressed further than just hooking up and dates. It's been quite tough on them because I'm not very good at things. Even now talking about it, I'm feeling so awkward. I'm not very good at talking oh, about I, love and great. feelings and stuff. So I love I'm, it. I absolutely love it. Well, I'm good at talking about feelings. Like I don't mind that, but I don't know. I sometimes, I think sometimes now when I talk about love, I talk, I think it, I think of it as a weakness. Really? Like, yeah, in the sense of if I start loving somebody, then that person will have power over me. and <sighs> Which is such a fucked up way to look at it. I mean, I don't think so, because it's, and if there's a potential for you to feel like stronger than someone else. And I think it's got something to do, and this whole limit thing where like you sort of obsess, I think it can develop into sort of loving feelings for sure. But if you constantly think about someone and you love them, 
and you want or so you want something from them that isn't happening like you know they have control over you because you can't control yourself sometimes mm. you know they might like you know not give you what you want and you still end up going back there whether it's you know someone that you've been in a long-term relationship with or not but you feel loving feelings towards suddenly they get more allowances than you would normally let them kind of thing isn't it mm. um and you're like mm, i don't know what about I don't, you because i don't pardon what well i definitely remember um i remember my first love i think i would say i've probably been in love twice right um i've said before in this about the relationship that i had most recently um mm. that was definitely i uh, for sure it, my belief was that we were deeply in love and i think you never i don't think you ever lose that i mean again it's i don't want to keep saying like you know it's most recent because it was it was a couple of months ago so i think it takes a while to sort of i, I don't want to say go away but like soften um but there's it's still there you know it's still there for sure the relationship that i had previously to that uh which who was my first love and i remember feeling the thing is i remember the distinct way that i felt about him straight away mm-hmm. it was very different to the second relationship the following relationship the first one was like it was almost like instant instant blind love like it was instantaneous yep like it was ridiculous and i i think <laughs> although we've never actually spoken about it like uh me and him at the time i think he was almost as batshit cray as me because like I find it really difficult if if I like someone or I'm friends with someone uh, or whatever. Like I need I, I text all the all the time. I text all the time. I don't really call, but if I text someone and they don't respond, I get really like a bit aggy or something. I'm a bit like oh shit or I don't know. I've worked my way into like these sort of things. And at the time, especially someone that I like, sorry, should I say? And at the time, he was basically as obsessed. We would just text all day, and he was as reciprocal as I as I wanted him to be. You know. And yeah. I went on for ages and I would see him a lot. And I think it was young people stuff. Like I can't imagine, right, at 26 or 27 or even now, I used to drive over there for an hour, sleep, drive back at like 2 a.m. to go to work at 5 and sleep and shit like that. Nope. And I'd ne- <laughs> I wouldn't, I'm not doing that for anyone. No <laughs> way. Not at all. I'd go to rugby training. That would finish. I would go there about 10, be there. I'd be there. We'd just hang out, fall asleep. And then I'd wake up at 12, 2 o'clock because I'm like, shit, I fell asleep. I didn't mean to. Drive back home because I couldn't leave the car at his and then have to go to work because I started work at 6 a.m. and I had to be up at 5. Whereas, like, <laughs> no disrespect to, obviously, you know, my previous relationship. But I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh, no, I'm too tired for that. Like, I can't, I can't be doing that. Like, honestly. No. Yeah. Once I have the hair crimps in it, like half nine at night, they're. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we ha- also had like arguments and stuff, which I'm not really a big fan of. You know, sometimes it happens, but we did. But I kind of remember as it fizzled out, which was kind of during our relationship as well. And you know, that's for different reasons. But I think that that feeling was so strong mm. that for me, the, the I guess the decline was quite quite steady, but quite steep. Mm. You know, it was something like you know, it's not going to work. Shoom. Whereas, yeah, I feel like I don't, I don't, well, during my second relationship, I, I was a lot more guarded just during it for some reason. I don't know what happened. I think it had something to do with like, I don't know, work and trust and all these sorts of things that are going on. But I don't feel now that I'd, I want to be more guarded. I actually feel more open. You know, I feel like I'm a bit more secure in what I want and... Well, I don't know what I want, but also like I'm not, I don't want to hide myself anymore, my feelings and all these sorts of things. I'm probably too open at this point in time, but that's okay. I'd rather be that way than being closed off because... Yeah. I think in life, there's you need to sort of go through a different, a few different loves before yeah. you're ready to find the one that, that it's right for you. I'm not saying this is right for everyone. I'm sure people like there's people I went to school with who met when they were 14 and started dating, dating like a 14 year old would date, and they're still together now, married, three kids. That's, That's crazy, ph- phenomenal. But I think if I was to be given advice to young people today, I'd say date often, fall in love, get your heart broken. Get it out of the way when you're 16, 17, 18. So that mm-hmm. times, you know, because your life's going to change so much. Like whatever you, when you start a career or go to university or whatever you decide. Like on the rare chances that you meet somebody's last, then it'll last anyway because you, you, you've got the connection. It'll work through it. But do it often. Get experience. Learn. I think I learned, I've learned off every single relationship I've had, whether it be long term or short term. And I wish I could go back and be a younger gay man with the knowledge I have now because... I would Why? Own, I'd own that nightclub. Oh, no, no. They're not relationships. <laughs> That's not the same. I just, I'd be more confident in myself. I'd know what I'd want sexually when I go out. I'd know what I'd be like up for, not for. And you wouldn't, when I was in my early 20s, I still wasn't out yet. So I was sort of going out with all my mates at uni and hiding who I was. And I wasn't able to do it, like do anything. Do you know what I mean? So it was a bit, I feel like my life's a little bit delayed when it comes to that type of stuff. 
and being again i'm not going to blame everything in life wrong it's this wrong around being gay but i think when you're at school and you don't have the sort of the chances or opportunities to flirt and build those really weak and weird relationships you do when you're like 15 16 17 you miss out on a lot like i think that's one of the foundations of growing as a person and like understanding relationships better because you know at that age you fall in love with every single erection and then like your heart breaks every two minutes and it's like move on and the next and it's i wish i could do that in my teens rather than do it in my 20s whenever i could be meeting people that actually count see i mean even if i was just to speak to you and just say that i just think like if you are about when these things happen it's you know i wouldn't worry about that i think people progress at different rates it's going to be hard regardless you know you can have it as a teenager and i wouldn't necessarily say that because anyone would go through these feelings as a teenager that they'll suddenly be more developed and able to deal with like these relationships even when now Mm. i just think that it's just always going to happen unfortunately like dealing with like love and trying to find your partner and your companion is like one of the most heartbreaking things to go through like honestly it's absolutely it's so it's like it breaks you down it builds you up like you just love people so much you can love people so much and then especially at like this point when you recognize that actually you love this is the most love that you can give and it's not enough i don't think that's got to do with like your age or you know i think that's person by person case by case kind of um, there are people that we know, you know, that, who've been in relationships in their 20s and, or, you know, haven't been in relationships and they're like 40, 45 or, and, or, or older, you know. People break up at 50 if they've been together, you know, in their 20s. It, it, you know, it's all, it's not comparable, is what I would say. It's not comparable to say like, oh, you wish you could, I wish you, I wouldn't have to go through any of these feelings, you know, really. But because I find it absolutely heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking sometimes. Yeah, so I know, I know it's not comparable in that way, but I just think maybe it's just a personal experience. but. I would be better prepared for love in my 20s and 30s if I had the chance to get some heartbreak out of the way when I was younger. There's also the chance that it might have like made you even more guarded. So if you, because I imagine like in your teenagers, you were really, really ugly. Uh, no one wants to be around you. And so you probably got like loads of rejection and then your heart would become like a massive stone and you would just reject all feelings. So you should count your blessings really. <laughs> like- Sometimes forget how lucky I am. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're having a deep conversation. Um, <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying. It's difficult because, yeah, I think like, I, th- I do think like not experiencing any sort of relationship building when it comes to almost, I mean, did you, do you think there were like times in your teenage years and like sort of maybe early 20s or late teens that you thought often about like guys that you couldn't get ever or yeah, felt all, like you couldn't? All the time. But then I also... I didn't really identify or realize I was gay until I was 20. Because for to me, the only people I knew were gay were like Graham Norton. And I wasn't like Graham Norton. So I didn't think, well, if that's what gay is, I'm not that. So yeah, I, mean, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know anybody who was gay and I didn't have any sort of way in. Point of reference. Yeah, point of reference. So I kind of, I knew I wasn't like my other mates at school, but I mm. didn't know what it was. And I was kind of lost in this, I felt like this limbo. But yeah, I used yeah. to like i guess crush on guys at school but then just kind of pin it down to oh maybe i'm i'm still developing or i'm a late developer or whatever i was just i didn't really i didn't really know how to handle it so mm. i think i was, think yeah go on oh well, i was gonna say i mean i think I, well i've chatted about this on my on my youtube channel but there was a time where i was just so unhappy as well because i didn't know how to deal with these weird feelings i had because i just didn't know what was going on in my head that you know i did something stupid and ended up in hospital for it so it I don't know. I just. I when think was this? When I was at school, I was silly with a lot of tablets. Not a lot of people know, but I guess a lot of people know. You never said that. Oh my no, god! No, I used to. I it was a really, really dark time um, when I was at school, and it was like I, I'm sure there was other stuff going on, and there was there was other stuff going on, but one of the, one of the things mm-hmm. in my head was I didn't really have some sort of outlet for these feelings that I was experiencing and I couldn't identify with anyone. I was also too scared to identify with anyone or talk to anyone because I knew it wasn't what was perceived as normal. So I was absolutely I was just kind of shit scared and left alone and I just was miserable. I was getting bullied at school as well. Like there's I don't know, it was just it wasn't a very great time. But I'm saying now if I was to go back now with everything I know, it would be a lot better, I think. I feel like that might be the case I don't think, I mean, I wasn't really aware that I was a gay, like, child. I mean, I kind of knew, not to sort of, I don't know, take anything away from you, but I did have, like, a negative experience in... I was going to say, I was going while to say I was in, that. 
I'm sure everyone else knew you were gay if you didn't know. La. I'm sure they did, mate. I was so <laughs> surprised. Me and my friend, and he, so he tries to, we're not, he lives, he still lives local to where like my mum lives, where I am now. And the girl that he was seeing was like, do you not think that, do you not think that he is gay? And I was like, when we were in school, I was almost certain because we used to pretend that we were the sugar babes. And I was like, how I didn't know that I was gay? I have no idea. But he was like so camp, so camp and still is. And I was like, come on now, come on now. And yeah, no, so he like has a child and stuff now. And um, I think where I'm from, although I don't think it's the same, even though it's London, I don't think it's anywhere near the same as like small towns. I think there is some certain pressure, you know, I think like, you know, being black or in, and like being in, in a in a city, London and all these sorts of things that you might have some sort of pressure. But mine was more like just like my household. I was so worried about telling them like, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anyone that was like openly gay, to be honest. Um, if I did, I knew it wasn't really like accepted and stuff. So I used to like get really upset and sort of cry myself to sleep because I'd known. I'd probably say since I was like 14, actually. I, prob- I think I knew, but I couldn't face it for ages and I used to sit there and just like think about like uh, you know be as dramatic as a teenager might be and be like I, did, I think I just need to leave home because I couldn't possibly tell my family that uh, like, I'm gay or whatever and I'd, I used to just cry there and just be like why is it me I've everyone I know why is it me kind of thing but I don't know whether it affected the way that I feel about relationships and sort of love because I certainly didn't have any relationships until I was like, well into my 20s you know I think like you I was quite a late bloomer you know I didn't I didn't have any relationships with girls or anything like that um, I was really bad. I still have a problem with re- rejection, I would say, massively. A massive fear of it. Um, I don't think I've experienced a whole bunch of it. And if I do, I get quite like, it does hit me a lot more than it probably should do. But I think now as I'm getting a bit older, like, although I don't put myself in many situations to be rejected, which is a bad thing, I would say that's a negative trait of mine. Um, I feel more resilient when it does happen. You know, I feel like I'm able to deal with it a lot better. And I was able to deal with you know my most recent relationship and the ending of that really really well probably because we both did probably because we I think we dealt with it you know the way that it went the way that it happened was very I don't know it seemed very mature in some way it seemed very like grown up it seemed like you know we were both having some sort of idea um yeah sorry I got really distracted I shouldn't have left the football on and some people are just running onto the on, onto the screen <laughs> onto the pitch they've got a bunch, but they're not streaking I just I got, I got really scared all of a sudden oh, wow. <laughs> they're not streakers uh they're just a bunch of people that run onto the pitch during the game literally yeah they had to stop the game just now um, oh. because a bunch of people were there stupid people well, they're probably i bet english. you they're british right they're british football fans they're probably <laughs> they're probably english yeah they're, they're, they're getting that trophy one way or another that's what they're thinking anyway um turn off the football it's it's gone now okay anyway it's been quite a deep conversation about love isn't it i guess um i came close to crying i'm not gonna lie I what just know. now well or, or, well not just now um or, well yeah i guess yeah I, don't know. I didn't know about that story that you said. I'm definitely going to ask you more about it once we come off. So it was like yesterday when I went to the cinema. So I was with one of our followers, Kevin. He watches our show, watches, he listens to our podcast a lot. And he's, he also left us a comment. He was really upset because when he said his name, when he was telling about the comments that people would put, I didn't recognize that it was his name. I just didn't think, I don't know. But anyway, but thank you for leaving your lovely feedback and comment. You're but um, he was talking about his, I know, I know. He was talking about his sister and his sister was like, do you know what? I'm a great parent. And the reason why she said that is uh, she was watching her two children. I think one's about four and one's six, he said. And they're two girls. And they were like, um, one of them asked one of them, are you going to marry a girl or a boy? And then one of them was like, "Mm, I don't know. I'm going to wait and see. And she was like, I'm an amazing parent. (laughs) And I was like, I think she's an amazing parent. They said that. say that and they they ask that question and then they're like i don't know i'll wait and see basically and you're just so happy and proud of your children and yourself for doing that i think <laughs> she deserves a round of applause i like yes you're an amazing parent well done to your children and i'm sure they'll turn out to be big old dykes but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> that is okay you be you but isn't that cute though that's really cute and what is isn't she six cute? then she i six? think they were a similar age i might be wrong with the ages but it was either like four and six so like sort of six and eight kind of thing um but yeah they're still like you know no i think it was more like closer to like four and six. Oh, that's really good anyway uh yeah so i think that i'm gonna give up on love just for a little bit because i find it so hard like honestly like it's so great and stuff like being in love is wonderful it is it's really good and especially when you first start falling in love and realizing that you're there but it's such a journey like honestly it takes so much from you and it's it's so annoying that like we go through life wanting to like try and find the person that you're meant to be with because that's such it's so hard but I think for now like I just need to not 
you know, I don't want to form any strong relationships just yet because I don't think I can take another beat down right now. You know, I feel like I'm still wounded in some way. And, uh, you know, I look forward to getting back on it in the future. But for now, I think it's like, yeah, it is like a physical beat up, I think, like going through heartache and love and all that sort of stuff. Like you can definitely feel the physical torture from it, I would say. So, yeah, for me, I just need a little break from it. But soon. But if anyone wants anything but love, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there just for everything else, you know. It's fine. I'm actually not. I'm really bad. I can't because I'll just limerence all up on that shit. If I find someone that I like but I don't want to be in like in love, I'll end up getting obsessed like within a second. And so I don't think I can be trusted just to do that. Just enjoy myself. And I mean in like a, a mental sense, by the way, and not in another sense. <laughs> in a mental yeah. capacity. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I'll say is, Date a lot, date often, date outside your type, date outside your race. Just date, 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 because you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. I do like frogs. But there's a frog today outside the gym, a little tiny baby one, like so tiny. It scared the shit out of me. I wasn't expecting it. I put my bike in and then it was like this thing just jumped off my foot or jumped on my foot. I was like, but like a little bit of... Was it a good kisser? Um, it was good at blowjobs. Oh, shit. And it's the right size for you, too. <laughs> it's a little froggy frog. <laughs> you don't know whether it's choking or it's just riveting. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, choke. <laughs> choke, bitch. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> just outside the gym as well. How fortunate is that? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Well, you know, when opportunity knocks. That's so country to have like a frog outside of your gym, by the way. That is literally <laughs> the epitome of countryhood. Like, honestly. <laughs> the, gym, the gym is like, the gym's out, it's about two and a half miles outside our town. And there's like a big mountain on the backdrop. And there's horses in the field next. And there's like, well. Frogs. Stop it. Yeah, there's like horses. And oh then today, God. today in the rain, there's two adult horses and there's two baby foals. And the foals were just loving the rain today. They're like running in the long grass. And it was very picturesque. Uh, oh my God. I couldn't even imagine. That's like a holiday destination hmm. for white people, that is. <laughs> <laughs> lots, of, <laughs> lots of frog, lots, lots, lots of frogs to kiss and sexually yeah. assault. <laughs> well, that was an emotional episode. It was, yeah. Pulled at the old heartstrings. Uh, I've not been the best co-host this week. I'm, I don't know, I'm so tired. I should have had a coffee, a couple of coffees before. But when oh. you're when you're an athlete like I am, and it was just all that frog sex, I was just exhausted after all that. I just frog sex and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But hey ho, thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you so much, and good luck and love, everyone. Honestly. Yeah, good luck and love. <laughs> make sure you, make sure you subscribe, everyone, and make sure you follow us on our social channels and leave little reviews maybe not after this one because you might be really depressed after this, <laughs> this yeah <one>. yeah let's <laughs> um and i just wanted to obviously i talked about something very personal there if anybody else is feeling similar feelings like they're feeling lost or alone there are support lines out there so make sure you check them out i know the trevor project is an american one but it has a 24-hour service chat which they're dedicated to lgbt youth so if you're feeling alone or lost um they provide crisis intervention and suicide prevention for LGBT youth. So yeah, make sure you check them out if you're feeling a bit low. Mm. And the but Samaritans are really good in the UK as well. The Samaritans. Uh, one of our friends. Yeah. And they're a great organization that work across the hour. Uh, to call them if you have any feelings that, you know, for example, like, you know, as a teenager or as someone who's a bit older, they have issues that you're not able to sort of deal with on your own. Mm. Um, yeah. They're a great organization. Well. Perfect. Thanks very much, very much for listening, everyone. And um, we promise next week we'll be full of lolly lols. Yeah, yeah. Get some sleep, Ashley. I will get some sleep. And eat more food. <laughs> but um, cool. Anyone? Thanks very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.